Lately, I've been going down the rabbit hole of solar chargers, and I came across this one on Amazon from Anchor, which is the Solix 30-watt charger. It is weatherproof, and I put that to the test because it's been out in the rain, and it charges up to 30 watts, but it's split between a power delivery USB-C port and a normal USB-A port. Now, the USB-C port is rated up to 18 watts, while the USB-A port is rated up to 12 watts. So what I decided to do was take this out for a little test. Since it does 18 watts out of the power delivery port, devices such as a MacBook Pro need a minimum of 15 watts to charge. Now, something like this, it wouldn't be able to necessarily run your MacBook, especially if it's a MacBook Pro while it's on, but in an emergency situation or you're hiking, whatever it may be, it could charge the battery if given enough sunlight. So I wanted to test it out to see if I could use this with my phone, with my Sony FX30 that accepts power delivery in, and I brought it out to the beach over a few different days to test this thing out in various conditions to see how well does this thing work. I just haven't seen many reviews on it, and if it does work well, this could be a really great addition to my arsenal, especially for emergencies. So let's check it out. up all right now be honest be honest right now and hold this and tell me how ridiculous i look with this thing on my back how ridiculous do i look riding with this thing what is that this my friend it's a solar panel Here, let's see how much power it generates. So as I'm looking at the power, it's switching between two and four watts. As you can see, we are not in complete sunlight. This is definitely cloud cover and heavy cloud cover at that. So let's check in in a few minutes after it's been out for, uh, I don't know, I'd say it's been out for like five minutes so far. Let's check in at 10 minutes from now and see how much more power we're getting. All right, now we're at a constant four, five, and six volts. We do have more sunlight. Uh, but maybe it needs to have more sunlight for a prolonged period of time. All right, so some bad weather kicked in. It was raining for a bit, now it's not, but I definitely don't have enough sunlight to test out this panel, so I'm gonna have to come back when it's uh, a little bit brighter. All right, so now I'm back a day later. It's beautiful, it's sunny out. And so I have my iPhone plugged into the solar panel. Now that I can see with pure sunlight, I'm getting a sustained 15 watts, which is the minimum requirement for power delivery if you're using something like a MacBook Pro. It requires a minimum of 15 watts in order to charge. But you could, in an emergency situation, let's say there's a flood, a hurricane, whatever it may be, and you don't have power, you can get this cheap solar panel and you could charge your phone, your tablet, your cameras, your drones, maybe your laptop, although, on my MacBook Pro 14 inch at 15 watts, it's probably gonna take like 10, 12 hours to charge to full, but you could in an emergency situation. And so I think for the price of the solar panel at around $80, it's worth it to have for emergencies. Would I use it all the time? Probably not. But right here, I have the solar panel and it has this little blue mark on here. And in that blue area, it has the power delivery and the USB-A. Now, when this solar panel is getting power, there's a little button that comes on in the middle of the black area on the blue right here. And that lets you know that it is receiving power. Really easy to fold. I actually, as you can see right here, I just have it unfolded on the bench right here in direct sunlight. Now, when I just picked up the phone right there, I guess it stopped charging because it wasn't in direct sunlight. And the second I put it back down, it started charging again. So this solar panel is really cool. It comes with carabiners that I have actually right here. And the way I'm using the carabiners is not necessarily to hang the solar panel so it can charge, but so I can attach it to my little a day like today. So I don't have to bring a major backpack. And then at that point I could do these tests out here in direct sunlight without bringing a huge kit with me. So I do think that this solar panel is going to be interesting for anybody who's looking for emergency power on the go. I'm not quite sure it's gonna be an everyday use case. Maybe it's cool if you decide to take a trip to the beach and you don't wanna to have to bring a power bank, but it does beg the question, is it worth using something like that over a power bank? 
And I think due to how big it is, even though it's small for a solar panel, I think just for a daily driver, I think you're probably better off with a power bank. I mean, I have the little power bank right here. You could get power banks this small from the same company, from Anchor, and this will power my phone twice. It'll charge my Osmo Pocket multiple times, and it's extremely small. So for everyday use, I think getting something like this makes a little bit more sense. But for emergency use, you can't really go wrong if you literally have no access to power. So just to wrap everything up, when it comes to this solar panel, you definitely need to be in direct sunlight to get the maximum use out of this. As you saw in direct sunlight, I was only getting 15 watts out of the USB-C here, even though it advertises 18, but I was getting 15 watts off the bat the second this thing was opened up. So I don't know if maybe if this was open for a few hours, maybe it would go to the peak of 18. I was in complete open sunlight with no clouds. But then on the day with clouds, where it was sometimes sunny, sometimes cloudy, it was a lot of cover that day, I was getting a consistent 5 watts, which is enough to charge an iPhone, especially some of the older iPhones, but definitely not enough to charge a computer, and some cameras won't work with that. So it is worth noting, but I don't plan on using this as an everyday carry. I don't really hike that much. But I live in Florida, we get hurricanes, and if you get a direct hit from a hurricane, sometimes you can be without power for over a week. So I think this is a really great and low-cost option to have if you were looking to have a solar panel that doesn't break the bank. It's obviously not going to power everything, but in an emergency situation, if there's no power for days and you need your phone, or maybe you're out hiking and you don't want to bring a lot of electronics with you and you don't want to bring chargers, this is a really great option. It's really affordable. The price on it has been fluctuating lately, so I'll just leave a link in the description below. And if you're interested, make sure to check it out. But if you have any questions, anything I didn't go over about this power bank, let me know in the comments below. And if you got knowledge and value out of today's video, please make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell to keep up to date with the latest videos on the channel. And until next time, my name's Jeff Fagan. Thank you for joining me as always, and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.